What's up, you guys? It's Jazz with Why Hip Hop. And today you're tuning to another episode of I Cannot Make This Up. First, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can get notifications on when I post more videos like these. And also hit that like button, you guys. It's the freest way to support the channel and let YouTube know that we're here. So with that being said, let's get into a few topics today. And I also need y'all to like, excuse me, I've been sick, so I'm just, you know, feeling good enough to actually come do some videos with my voice. My nose, everything's still nasally. So y'all forgive me, but I did feel it was a few things I wanted to go ahead and let y'all know that was going on in the streets. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first, you do have most deaf mentioning Drake, okay? Now, for those of you that don't know, and I know that sounds crazy to say, but most deaf is one of those OGs in the hip hop industry. He's also one of those OGs in the acting industry. So when it comes down to those actors or those uh, hip hoppers, those rappers that actually know how to act too, like Tupac, Ice Cube, that is one of the things that most deaf is really good at. He's been in so many different films. And obviously, I can't name them all off the top of my head, but he was a 90s prince when it came to film so shout out to most deaf it's nice to see that he's still looking good i heard he had to move to africa or something i could be lying but y'all let me know with that being said today's news on today's episode of i can't make this up most deaf said that drake is not a rapper he's more of a pop artist and i want to know if y'all agree so let's go ahead and listen to this clip and i'll be right back like is drake hip-hop Drake is pop to me, in the sense that like, if I was in Target in Houston and I heard a Drake song, it feels like a lot of his music is compatible with shopping. <laughs> Commercial music. Or as or as Commercial you know, music. shopping with an edge, in certain instances. Fair. I like Drake's music, but I understand exactly what you're saying. Of course. I mean, I, it's, I, I It's get commercial, it. entertaining, fun, it's, good, it's, formulaic music. It's likable. Likable music, yeah. It's likable. Um, but is it... You know, I'm going to leave you alone. We're going to move. We're going to move on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many products. Okay, so from the clip, as you can see... He ain't really trying to shade the man. A lot of people feel like, oh, you being a hater. Oh, you you just old school and woo, woo, woo. He's really trying to say that the genre of music that Drake continues to make versus what rap started off as is probably not the same. So it's okay to subcategorize things. And we got to know that too. We can't say that Drake is the best rapper alive. He could be the best pop artist alive that came from that era. And then we got Michael Jackson that was sitting in the pop artist era as well, or the area as well. So it's like, it's a lot that really goes into the politics. Drake is obviously the best at something. He is the best Canadian rapper I have ever seen in my life. But is he a rapper? I probably have to agree with most deaf on this one. Drake is not a rapper. Drake is a pop star. And it's okay. When Drake first started, though, I got to shout out my boy Drake because I used to be a Drake fan in the beginning. I started realizing the culture vulture stuff later. And then that's what made me back up and realize it's pretty childish. But in the beginning, he had music like what it was. Um... Fear, Fear was definitely a song of mine. Houston, Atlanta, Vegas, things like that. Those, I feel like, even though Houston, Atlanta, Vegas, you know, was in his early career, it was still ty a type of pop song, in a sense. It wasn't just the rapping. It was giving Nicki Minaj. It was giving the rapping and singing. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to Drake. Shout out to Most Deaf as well. Because I love the fact when uh, people from an era before us come and they state facts without feeling like they're going to be attacked for stating those facts. 
Because he did say, oh, why'd you do this to me? Because he already know people are going to have something to say. But I like people that tell the truth despite what they feel people are going to say. Because you might just find out that a whole bunch of other people agree with you too. So shout out to Most Deaf. Now let's go ahead and get into this next subject. Okay, y'all. So again, forgive me because I'm a little sick. So, you know, I, I might sound stuffy. But with that being said, y'all, this one is if, as if... 2024 is not already bringing enough. If y'all don't know Des Dior, Des Dior is the girl that used to go with Future. She's the young girl that used to go with Future. She's also Jada Wado's best friend. Um, she's also like a rapper. So she dibbles and dabbles in a little bit of everything, including fashion, you know, uh, reality TV. She is one of the people that's on the Impact show that I was talking about the other day that P is one of the executive producers for. So with that being said, her dad has been on that show a plenty of times or at least once or twice, right? So with that, her dad recently got arrested, which was literally like the other day. What was it? January 22nd is supposed to be. Um, I don't even know. He recently got arrested and charged with S.A. on a 14-year-old girl living in his home. The girl's mother breaks silent and alleges the rapper also tried to evict them. So the craziest thing about it is apparently Des Dior probably was paying for the home. It's her daddy home. She paying for that. He doesn't have relations with this lady daughter, which is his girlfriend or whoever he's with, her daughter. And when when it happened, it seems like Des Dior actually was mad at the lady in, in defense of her dad, which I get to an extent, but I ain't trying to be funny with my family. Um, Baby, I have to tell you the truth. If don't nobody else tell you the truth, that's dead wrong. I probably would have been the beacon of hope that they could have seen coming from this guy because I don't think that's right, especially a 14-year-old girl. So let me just read. Hollywood Unlocked reports... Alexis Ellis is demanding justice after Atlanta rapper Des Dior's father was charged with sex with SAing her 14 year old daughter. Disclaimer the alleged assault and arrest happened last year. However, the mother is now speaking out days ahead of the reported January 22nd trial. So he actually got arrested for this last year. So he's supposed to go on trial. Starting on January 22nd. So, I know I said he was arrested a few weeks ago. Now I got clarification. A few weeks ago, he was not arrested. A few days ago, the woman had started talking out about it because she's about to go into trial with this. So now, jail records show that Daryl Lawrence Bailey, the 51-year-old father of 25-year-old Atlanta rapper Destiny Bailey, famously known as Des Dior, was arrested and booked into the Henry County Sheriff's Office jail on February 27th of 2023. Hit with five charges, including R.A.P.E., including statutory um, R.A., um, aggravated sodomy. Oh, my gosh. Do you understand that that's like sodomizing someone is anal? So a 14-year-old girl, you're sodomizing, aggravated child molestation, and aggravated S battery of a child per the North Carolina beat. Baylor remains in custody without bond as of Thursday, January 11. Ellis told the outlet that she met Bailey in 2022 at a Savannah Home Depot. They both worked together as Fort Lift drivers. They grew close enough for her to lend Bailey money, which he'd pay back. In January of 2023, Ellis tried to leave a man she was involved with, and Bailey opened his home up to her and her children. The following month, Ellis alleged that one morning around 5 a.m., Bailey raped her, I'm sorry, Bailey R. Aid, her 14-year-old daughter. After the alleged incident, Ellis, who was two hours away for a funeral, said her daughter called and told her everything, rushed into the home. Ellis called 911 to meet her. 
af- afraid of what she'd do to Bailey once face to face. When officers arrived, they took the girl's clothes and bed sheets, but did not arrest Bailey, which infuriated Ellis. On February 27th, Ellis learned Bailey was in custody and she was free to return to his home where she had legally established residency. But Ellis said her and her daughter's fingerprints used to access the home were deleted from the system. She also alleged that Des Dior came by and insincerely apologized to her daughter, stating, I'm sorry what happened to you. The next day, Ellis said the rapper and her brother returned with police trying to evict them. So, y'all, this is, I want to say it like this. Instead of me trying to say, oh, this is what I think has happened, I'm going to give you my opinion after reading this public news article. These things were alleged, so we will say that as the disclaimer. Allegedly, he S.A. this 14-year-old girl, which is his girlfriend's daughter. So you really S.A. your stepdaughter, okay? Dez is a woman. Dez eventually has to have children, whether she has a boy or whether she has a girl. I can't imagine that this would be okay. If this happened to your daughter. Allegedly. Even if it was alleged. I can't imagine that you would be okay. With you being the problem. Or you having to pick up pieces. After that man has done that. Now. Most people going to be like. That's his house. That's his daughter's house. Why would she want to stay there? Woo, woo, woo. I agree. But the next day. Give me some time, because if don't nobody want to move out, I want to move out. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it together. Give me some time. Give me like a a 30-day to maybe 90-day notice, because unfortunately, I wasn't prepared for him to be a pedo. I wasn't prepared for him to be sick. I was around here living my life. Now my, my daughter has been sodomized. And it's just okay. You're you're sorry for what happened to her. No, you need to be sorry that your dad did that to her. I am sorry my father did that to you. I would never approve of any of that. Say something like that. And to add insult to injury, come back the next day and actually try to evict them. Now y'all gotta know something. And this, I'm gonna keep it a beat in the book. I love me some dads. I love me some dads, so I have to look at this from her point of view. She probably like, look, I personally don't know what was going on, but I do know that you're supposed to be my daddy girlfriend. You taking my daddy to court right now. I don't want to pay for your living conditions, and I do get that. So as I get that, oh, she trying to evict us, that could have been added for the empathy factor. I also get that you need to wake up and realize you don't even need to be in that man's stuff, period. I wouldn't even want to see him again. Where did they let him out? Where you going to come? Back to his home? What you thought you was going to be like, oh, no, he can't come over here. It ain't yours. So look, get out. You and your daughter, take your baby, and y'all go somewhere safe. That's the only thing. I get it, y'all. I wholeheartedly get sometimes you cannot even afford to do that. So that's why I say give me like three months, Des, please. Because this ain't have nothing to really do with me. It had more to do with your father. But I'm actually blow that this man did this to sodomize that little girl. You traumatized her for life. She got to go through this. You was on the mama and the daughter. That's not cool, bro. That's not cool. So I definitely want to know what y'all think about it. Do y'all think that Des Dior is wrong for trying to evict her ex-stepmother and her ex-stepsister after her dad has been caught up in these charges, do y'all think Des was wrong, or do you have she had? Do you think she had proper reasoning? And I'ma just let y'all know what side I sit on. I do think Des had proper reasoning for evicting them the next day. I wish she would have gave him a little bit more time, and I would tell her that as a friend. I would tell anybody that. Like I'ma tell you the truth. You could j- just give him a little more time, cause we really sit here and look at it. Boom, boom. Again, if it ain't gonna hurt you. Three more months. If it's going to hurt you, one more month type type stuff. So, again, do y'all think that Dez Dior's dad was wrong when he did what he did? Do y'all believe that he even did it? 
Because, again, all these things are alleged. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments. Let's go ahead and move on to this next subject. It's going to get juicy. Okay, so listen close, all right? This next subject is going to get juicy like a grape, okay? It's going to get juicy like vine-ripened tomatoes, okay? Y'all remember when Keepy D had went into jail because they finally picked them up for running his mouth. Y'all remember, Keepy D took his behind. I think it was an Art of Dialogue or a Blad TV, whichever of them be getting you to tell on yourself in about 10 minutes. He went over there and he told them folks what he told them folks about his proximity to the Tupac case. Now, everybody and their mama know this case has been unsolved for almost 30 years. I think Tupac died in 94. I was born in 94. I think he even died before I was born. So that just goes to show this case been going on for almost 30 years. That's what my mama say. She be like, baby, we ain't know. We been asking who shot Tupac for 30 years, shot. So, you come up here in the new age of technology and cameras everywhere, and you, out of all the training that you done got, out of all the crime that you've done and kept your mouth shut, you come up here, and the day is the day that you need to expose that you had something to do with Tupac's death and that. You, 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 you kind of laughing about it. Like you, you even imply others have something to do with it. I get it. For him, I feel like he was like, oh, it's 30 years later. Ain't nobody going to say nothing. Them fans definitely show him that they're still openly investigating that case because it was unnecessary. So boom, not keep it deep in jail. Keep it deep in jail. Keep it deep even tried to ask for himself to be released. He was like, I need to appeal this. I want to be released. I was just joking. I never meant any of those things. And we supposed to believe that nowadays. When they got you in the interrogation room on tape saying that somebody named Ron with a cuff and a patty had to hire you and did it to do it. Said they had done gave you a million dollars, allegedly. This is what you said, allegedly. So, now, the feds done did what they do, and they submitting that tape from interrogation, because you say what you want. I don't care about your YouTube interview. I don't care about who you told on the block that told Shalandra, that told Kiana, that told Tavin. But one thing we do got is legal evidence of you saying it out of your mouth in our building. So we can use the heck out of that. So that's one thing. But again, all of this is alleged. So I want to know what y'all really think of it. If I can find the video, I'll insert it in here. But I want to know what y'all really think of it. Do y'all think that Keefe D has something to do with the death of Tupac? Do y'all think that he is telling the truth when he allegedly says that P. Diddy is the one that did or, or, or called the hit? If so, then we got a rabbit hole to go down because why would P. Diddy call the hit on Tupac? I thought he was... I don't know. Like, why would... You know what I'm saying, y'all? So, that's something to just think about, y'all. I just wanted to let y'all know that video is about to be submitted into evidence. That video is about to be submitted into evidence. When a jury goes across evidence and they get... When stuff can be submitted into evidence and a jury gets to examine it, this is not the type of stuff that they're saying, oh, no, jury can't watch the news because they could be swayed. Jury can't watch the media because they could be swayed. They're going to bring the jury this evidence so they can't be swayed by anything else other than what they're seeing in the courtroom. What do y'all think this is going to mean for Diddy? I do think that his, his, his kingdom is tumbling. Um... I think he held it up for a long time. I think I told y'all this in the last video when I even mentioned Diddy. Um, 
We grew up on Diddy. We were influenced by Diddy. Everything that Diddy did was to be praised. Um, But when you change the perspective and you look at everything that has been coming up in the media about him and you see that allegedly he may have had something to do with Tupac's killings and he also may have had something to do with other situations, it puts into perspective this man been tricking or marketing to us our whole life. Been lying to us our whole life. Now, do he owe us the truth? No. But when we around here screaming, who shot Tupac? And you know, and you did it bopping. And it was, you know, you know what's going on, allegedly. That is some of the shadiest character I've ever witnessed. You got way bigger fish to fry. Way bigger fish to fry. But for him, he 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 don't see it like that. He like, right, Jazz, I do got way bigger fish to fry, which is continuously torturing this culture, which is continuously setting us back a little bit more every step I take. I realize now that all this stuff is coming out, I realize how a lot of the stuff, we, we literally have a whole drill rap a rap genre that's based around that that kill, 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 murder, murder, murder. We have that. Literally have rap that's versed, based around that. Before Tupac and Biggie, I don't remember the rapper beefs being so popularized. I don't remember them being so deadly. Now, it is common. If you beefing with somebody, somebody got to be gone soon. We looking at the Dolphin the um, Gotti situation. Rap beef now, y'all. These are rappers that are beefing. It could be all of it's personal. Obviously, people are not always rapping. So if I'm beefing with you, it's not because I came up and rapped to you. Hey, yo, so we got a problem and it all starts now. Here's my name, your name, Lil Bow Wow. It, it ain't going to go like that. But these are regular people that happen to be rappers beefing now they turning this stuff into something on our airways to be a part of and i do feel like that that outline started with diddy i feel like that outline started with diddy making that initial decision if it is in fact true that he allegedly had tupac off by sending keefe d them that's what keefe d said it's now up to the courts to prove that he is telling the truth, and they plan and intend to submit this into evidence. Okay, y'all, please let me know what y'all think. Again, it's way more to this Diddy story. I feel like it's way more that he's had influence over, whether it's the murder route, whether it's the, the rainbow route. I, I'm telling you, everything that he's touched, you can kind of see the transpiration of it out and about. Everything down to Saucy Santana. So, y'all let me know. Do y'all think that this evidence that is supposed to, supposedly going into Keepy D's case is going to prove that Diddy did allegedly tell um this man to do this or he didn't? What do y'all think? All right, let me know in the comments. We're going to go ahead and get into the next subject. All right, so I decided to do this topic last, even though it is really the most impactful on the video today. Uh, the reason I decided to do this topic last is because I wanted to just go into it a little bit more deep, okay? So, y'all, Yo Gotti's daughter, I mean, ooh, Lord, have mercy. Let's go ahead and say a prayer because I did not mean to say that. Yo Gotti's brother, Big Jook, ended up being uh, shot and killed in his hometown yesterday after a funeral, okay? Um, rest in peace to Big Jook. I don't want to see anybody. Um, I, don't, I really hate to see all this black-on-black -black violence. I really hate to see black men perishing. It seems that he was a pillar to his community, not only economically and business-wise, but even spiritually, because a lot of people like Big Boogie, um, who else? What's his name? Finesse two times. 
they kind of express their love and what, you know, just, just like, dang, like, I can't believe that you gone. They, they, you could see that this man may have really been respected in his city. Aside from being Gotti's brother, I'm pretty sure he got a lot of respect. Okay. So definitely, um, shout out to CMG, rest in peace to CMG. I mean, rest in peace to, uh, Young, um, dang, bit jook, but also rest in peace to Young Dolph, y'all. So if y'all do not remember, it was like two two years ago. I I fact check, but it, I know one thing. It was on my birthday, and I hate that this all be happening around my birthday. So on November seventeenth, Dolph was gunned down in a cookie store, y'all. I'm not talking about no marijuana. I'm talking about he was gunned down while purchasing sweets. Now, get this. Most men, that's almost the equivalent to gunning a nigga down in Bath and Body Works. That's almost the equivalent to gunning a nigga down in the flower shop. Like, you know he finna get these little treats and trinkets and take them back to somebody that really wants to see him, really values what he doing. And I say that because only men really think of those types of things. Stay with me now. A man will probably see you with your kids and be like, no, it's not time to gun him down now because he got family stuff going on. They'll probably see you with a box of diapers in your hand coming from Walmart even if you don't got your kid and be like, nah, let me let little man get them diapers first because he going to need them. So, Dog was gunned down at this cookie store. You could have waited until he left. Them people's business was destroyed. You didn't care what was going on with nobody else but yourself because you were sent to do a hit. Some crash dummies, some young dumb ones. Crash dummies. Crash dummies. Dolph did not deserve that, right? So now we got the fact that Dolph is gone and you got all these people that's like, well, who was he beefing with? So that's where you got Yo Gotti that come up. Everybody knows that Yo Gotti and Dolph has had the beef for the longest with each other. I think some happened at CIAA where uh, Gotti them sprayed 100 shots at uh, uh, Dolph car allegedly. Allegedly, Gotti's team went for Dolph, sprayed over 100 shots at that car, and they happened to be bulletproof, so they missed them. Dolph came back. He actually did a doggone song called 100 Shots, got on that man's head, rolled him, made him feel so crunchy. Yo, Gotti was not winning that battle at that point. So, boom, now you got Dolph dead, right? We gonna skip. I'm just saying that just to say that. Let's go on ahead. We got Dolph dead after Dolph died, not too long after. Black youngster died. Uh, Black youngster brother died. Well, if we in Memphis, and there's some Memphis beef going on for real, right? And the Memphis beef that's really, really going on involves a few people. And then out of these few people, certain stuff around them start getting touched. You probably not going to tell me that it don't pertain to that. Y'all, yes, black people be dying every day. So, yes, it is a, a chance that something could happen. But in these streets, for real, most of what you get into has to do with stuff that you was already involved in yourself. Very seldomly, especially in Memphis, I'm pretty sure everybody know how to mind their own business. So if I'm getting into it, it's with somebody that I really had tech with. You see what I'm saying? Not none of the, oh, this just happened to be black youngster brother, even though we were looking for the people that had something to do with Dolph Death. Okay? Follow me here. Because I'm actually not saying nothing like that. I'm just saying this real close to proximity. Follow me here. So now you got Black Youngster Brother died. Now, yesterday, you got Gotti Brother died. 
And I think in the, in the meantime, between time, somebody cousin died too. Somebody else done died in the meantime, between time. But these are the two biggest ones, black youngster brother and your Gotti brother. So now you got your Gotti brother that just died. So I'm like looking through the comments because I don't know who this man is. Like why everybody like, you know, woo, woo, woo. Obviously, you know, I love Dolph. Again, he died on my birthday. I got to meet Dolph on the set of a Plies video shoot, y'all. I used to work for Plies. I used to get the girls for his videos. So thank you. I used to actually be able to stay on the set thanks to Plies to actually see what they were putting together. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, I had to make sure that the girls were coordinated for each scene. So long story short, they did this little, um, it was a song called Rats Up To My Ear. And they did that at Slip and Slide Records, like on the patio. And when Dolph came in there, we were all like, they were all, it was him, Ted, Plies, they were all like sitting around this little round table at Slip and Slide Records. And I was like showing them the girl, showing them what I was going to do with the bows on her, you know, on her tatas and stuff. And he basically was very nice. Like when it came out of speaking to everybody, he was very nice. And I really, really, really appreciated that. He was nice on the set that whole day. They were, we did some stuff with like cars, all that. So I say that to say, I got a chance to meet Dolph and I did even get a chance to meet Yo Gotti. Um, I don't like this girl and this, this thing. So I told my dude, I keep telling my man, stop posting this picture with me or Gotti or this girl. Like what you doing? <laughs> but <laughs> I did get a chance to meet your Gotti too. And that was a nice experience too. Like they were kindred men. Don't ever get me wrong. They're not, you know, like adamant F, F, F niggas. Like, nah, they literally are kindred spirits for the most part. But when it come down to they be for they petty stuff. That's what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? So, boom. Now you got your Gotti brother that died. And I'm like, what he got to do with it? And the first thing I do think is Young Dolph. Even if I don't think he got nothing to do with it, I'm like, if Yo Gotti, because at first I'm thinking that, you know, it got something to do with Gotti, so they're trying to get at his people around him and woo, woo, woo. You see what I'm saying? So with that being said, I go to looking through the comments, y'all. Why somebody said that this basically, they remember him from the investigation, and this is the man that is said to have put the hit out on Dolph. Ain't that something? So they saying that Gotti brother is the one that put the hit out, and that this is retaliation for that. Now, again, all of this is alleged. They said that this is allegedly inside of the investigation. I did not follow too closely with the investigation. And I also know I don't live in Memphis. I live in Florida. So when it comes down to the hood news in different states, it take a little bit longer to get over here to our country. Ass. But when it comes down to it, one thing about country folks, we all want the same. So when, when we talk about stuff, everything being talked about. Everything being talked about. Yeah, he said da 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 and da 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 So this some word of mouth, grapevine type, type stuff. You see what I'm saying? Do y'all believe that? Do y'all believe that Big Jook's death is retaliation for Young Young Dolphs? Do y'all believe that? I personally, I would hate to believe that this man put a hit on that man because I see that a lot of people look up to him. He looked like a nice guy. They say he owned a restaurant. He looked like he give back to the economy. But I also know what that, you know what that could mean and what that be like. Like, you probably covering up for something else, you know? So with that being said, y'all, y'all let me know in the comments if y'all think that Big Jug Def had anything to do with Young Dogs or if y'all just think that this is all some big hoax and, you know, whatever he got into was just something that just happened on a whim. Again, he don't spark me as the type of person that would allow anybody to get too close to him if he didn't necessarily know them or, you know, he just, it, it just, I don't know y'all. And then again, remember black youngsters brother died. So me and my mama would talk about if somebody brother died, how they'll probably take your brother, you know? So I don't know. I'm not saying nothing like that. I haven't even heard from black youngsters since young Dolph died. So to be honest, I'm not saying that black youngster got nothing to do with it. But I will say that he was one of the people that was affected deeply by this. So I just wonder who 
would have been a person to not like this man if he was so well liked in this city. And why would he have to go through this after a funeral? Like he just got done burying someone else. Who would be that heartless? What have you done? Who would be that heartless on you? I also seen somebody say Dolph. They they basically said he snaked Dolph or something. He switched up on him. He snaked Dolph. So I would love to know if y'all know any, you know, I, I, again, I personally want to know more of the truth instead of what a person would like for you to see. Because from what we see, it's just a random person that shot him after a funeral. And if that's, oh, like what happened, if that's what allegedly happened, then that means to be like, y'all got to stop now. If he did put the hit out on Dolph, like people are allegedly saying, if that's what they said, because again, I did not watch what y'all watch. I can't find, like, I ain't even trying to go find it. I can't do not. I don't know what investigation y'all talk about, but if that is indeed what happened when they did the investigation, they found out that he do. Oh, my mama even said he was acquitted or something. Like he, he, he basically was found not guilty of it like twice or something. So again, even with that, even with that, but we will see because I know obviously plenty of times people could be found not guilty for something and they definitely did it. It's definitely about the power that you have, the influence that you have that gives you, you know, the results that you want. We've seen that with the Diddy case for so long, his power and influence has allowed him to uh, just miss jail time. Again, whether it was aggression in the middle of the streets in New York, arguing with other people and bullying and, uh, you know, again, assaulting them or whatever the case is, it seems that jail time doesn't have to be something that he experiences because of the money that he he, he was getting. So maybe Big Jook was respected enough in his community to be able to avoid jail time, but not the actual, um, you know, how you, you could be found innocent by a jury but guilty by your peers. It, it seems like it was one of those things. So y'all let me know. Again, all this info is alleged in this video. I don't know these people. I just want to know what happened to make this figure that everybody seems to love. Like, what's going on? Why was he gone down after a funeral, y'all? Again, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscription button, that subscribe button, hit the notification so that you can get notified whenever I post another video like this. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and like this video. Again, that's a free way for you to support the channel, guys, that lets YouTube know that we are still here. And I definitely want to thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, y'all. Bye.